Welcome, creatives, community, and kind folks out there. I am DBJ. I am your host of RPG with DBJ. And today, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a twist because, well, I mean, it's my channel, right? Um, <clears throat> away from Future Friday. Because really, I haven't posted a Future Friday video in quite a while, uh, simply because uh, we will be doing world building using going through the ages for uh, the, the upcoming weeks. But today, I wanted to bring up something that had um, been floating around the, it, it's kind of a, one of my really old rant videos, I suppose you could say this <laughs> for this, but um I wanted to bring up a couple of things that happen to be floating around the uh, RPG community and throw in my two cents, kind of put on my professor hat, uh, throw a little bit of a Grognardian thing, throw in my, uh, the, the fact that I've been playing for like over 30 years, probably um, late 70s uh, I started. And um, an RPG ha hobby for me, um, has been on and off, yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Deadman, the storyteller, says Tips and Tricks Friday, which doesn't have a ring to it. Tips and Tricks Tuesday sounds, sounds a little bit better. But I thought I'd go over some things, throw on the professor hat a little bit, do a little bit of um, finger wag wagging at, at, at people out there in the community, and um, try to get us to flex a muscle that, honestly, yeah, yeah it's been... Um, yeah, forty years. Yeah, uh, man, I, I, I'm I'm showing a gray hair from every adventure. This uh, expedition of Barrier Peaks, um, Tomb of uh, Horrors. Uh, anyway, all right. So by the title, after tips and tricks, you'll see charisma and group roles, and then I put roles and in parentheses roles. Okay, um, not going to spell them out. This comes up, and this amongst a number of other things, like alignment, like um, um, balancing adventures uh, from uh, how to um, be spontaneous in your descriptions when the players make strange turns. Some of these things just happen to to come up in the, the RPG community and, and whatnot. So one of these uh <laughs> but that's right yeah hell yeah i'm gonna shoehorn that shit in there anyway um all right oh so okay so uh, this came up um uh cody miller uh taking 20 did a video recent video of this and this has been done before we talks about charisma rolls and i'm talking about rolling the dice charisma die rolling and finding out the the results of that and how it is in our community that in, in essence what he was saying like we're doing it wrong and in a way i'm i'm saying the same thing we are using social and sometimes even uh mental skills and attributes the wrong way and we've been doing it no no not we i've been doing it wrong for 40 plus years um, and most of us in the community do it absolutely incorrectly. And it's because it, it seems quite unnatural. I, I'm going to give you an example and compare this. I'm going to do combat. I'm going to do social interactions. I'm going to do some exploration. And I'm going to ex to describe it to you and show you how what the differences are. Okay. So Game Master, Dungeon Master, Storyteller, whatever, says, hey, Roll initiative, guys. Um, the creature comes around the corner, jumps off the uh, the small hill, lands in 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 the middle of the road, and what do you do? And someone's like, I'm gonna draw my sword and I'm gonna prepare a spell or something like that. Oh, okay, roll initiative, boom, roll initiative. Okay, you have the initiative. What are you gonna do? And one player's like, I'm gonna draw my sword and run up to it and hack at his knees, hoping he falls down to the ground or something, right? And then somebody else is like, I'm gonna stay in the back and prepare my spell and launch my spell um over the shoulder of the of the great fighter and blast this thing in the eyes. Okay, a little simple descriptor, descriptor, whatever. Game Master says, okay, grab requisite amount of dice. What is your ability to do that? You roll the dice. Then we start describing the results of that, that die roll, right? Um, okay, Game Master says, your sword bites into his thigh and he screams out in pain, but it's not enough to bring him down to his knees. You're going to, you know, you're going to have to, um, 
hit this this giant hill giant or something like that um multiple times before you even um start to take him down he's a tough one you're going to need some backup or something and then or you describe the spell the spell's effect okay the spell arcs over the person's head eldritch energy blasts him in the face and he's blinded for a moment and whatnot he's reeling back on his heels it'll only take a um take a few hits to knock him down off the ridge or something and we so we describe these things of after making the role person says i would like to do something generally right maybe five to ten five to ten percent descriptor we roll the dice and then we do the other 95 90 to 95 percent results of that okay now let's go into a social interaction pcs come to the city there's a guard there. One of them's eating an apple. Another one gets up, looks like he's bored. There's an official behind them looking with a with a um, clipboard of sorts. And the guard comes up. Hey there, who are you? Uh, uh, where are you coming from? And and do you have any items you need to disclose? And then, you, you know, maybe the, the inspector or something has got his nose in the air and he's like looking around their cart. And then we start interacting. Oh, sir, I'm coming from a foreign land or whatever, and I'm here to visit my cousin. And um, I'm a priest and just wish to uh, wish to uh, give thanks or whatever. And like, my cousin is the noble or something. And then another PC is like, well, I'm going to try to deceive him, and I'm going to do this. Da, da, da. And we start, so we start socially interacting. And for the most part, we don't start bringing out the dice. It's not necessary to do that, right? Not really. I mean, you know, you're socially interacting. And then one person says, you know, maybe the, the official says, uh, it's going to be 10 silver for every weapon you bring into the town. And, you know, PCs are just like, 10 silver? I'm not paying 10 silver and I need my sword. And it looks like he's writing down notes or something like that. And like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to um, convince him that the, the king needs to see us and um, he should let us go, right? And so instead of really describing what a, a generalized what they think they would like to happen, what ends up happening is we get into this long social interaction about and come up with the outcome of the desires of with what we wish we want after engaging in a long series of social interactions, and then we roll dice. And what happens is it can be incongruous. It, it might not, the die roll may not match the interactions that happened above board on the table. And then therefore someone who botches, they fumble, they get a really low roll, even after a great speech by one of the player characters, then we're, we're, we either do one of two things. We either go, uh, we, we either have to accept the fact that no matter how great that was, we're just going to shoot down the idea that you grave this great deceptive, wove this great deception or, you know, really persuaded the guard to let you do something that we all thought was amazing and just accept the fact that, well, it sounded amazing, but it just didn't work, uh, which kind of kills a little bit of the energy. Or we have to, we, we do something else, which I, I find rather, um, Annoying. It's not just annoying. It's ra it, it, I, I find this um, in a way. It's 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 idiotic. It's almost evil in a way. And the other one is people will want to retcon what you, the player, just said, and say that you actually said something else, despite the fact of weaving in fifteen minutes of social interactions. Well, actually, what you said was um, you insulted his mother and told him that he was stupid and it's like well and the player's like no, i didn't say that and the other players are like well you probably did if you rolled a one or you failed or you fumbled or whatever you know you 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 probably insulted his mother and it's like my character wouldn't insult his mother no matter what right all right let's move on to uh exploration right um exploration the pcs go into an ancient tomb and they find an old library and they go looking around into the library and the wizard's like well i'm the smart one i'm going to open up a couple of books and see if i can find out about this ancient ritual and they're like oh, okay and other pcs the barbarians there and the bards there and the clerics there whatever and they're looking around at books and just randomly doing things um and 
all of a sudden, one of the, the wizard pulls out a book and he's like, I'm going to look for an ancient ritual. Opens up the book. Okay, uh, give me your arcane check or your skill check, whatever. Blah, blah. I get plus 17. We roll. Oh, shit. I fumble. I fail. Oh, well, other PCs are like, man, well, we really need to find that book. Everybody jumps in. Well, I, I want to I want to roll the book. Well, I want to do that. I, well, I want to do the thing. Well, let me roll. Barbarian characters like, well, I get a minus two on my roll. I rolled a 20. I guess I found the book, right? And and so some of these sometimes we handle things in 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 an order that is rather improper, but the muscles that we use, mental muscles that we use, don't match with the mechanics of the game, and therefore it gives us a result that doesn't seem to um seem to uh, blend with what you're doing. Uh, Vincent says uh, the magic word is leverage. You can't roll unless you have it. And uh, there are many games that actually delve deep into or, or, or are explicit in the way they describe uh, charisma, social interaction. So let, let, me, let me break this down a little bit. One thing that we, we very rarely do is when we start doing social interactions is that we very rarely, if ever, do this. Guards come up to you. You come into the city. The guards introduce themselves. Hey, um, we don't really going to spend five minutes on this, right? So we go, oh, hey, how are you? Um, you do realize you have weapons. Uh, the PCs are like, well, um, you know, I belong here. And the, no one ever says, okay, hold on. I want to make a, um, I want to make a roll to see if I can persuade him, or I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, well, I'm going to deceive him, right? Then after making the roll to do that role playing out the effects or the events of what that die roll represents. So for example, if your character normally is very charismatic and fails the role, that we then role play out the failure of being charismatic from that, that PC. Um, we don't do that. But actually the, the game mechanics say that that's what you do, right? You generally say what you wanna do, you roll to see if you succeed or fail, and then afterwards we then we then do the description of the success or failure. Um, in combat, if you if a person failed a roll, you say, "Hey, I want to shoot him with my arrow." I roll, I failed. Then we describe what I, what did you? Oh man, you know the dust was in my eyes. I go to aim at him, but he must have just been too fast. What we describe the results of the failure. Um, now. With social interactions, what ends up happening is we're not just describing. Sometimes we're in character. Like we're not, some people will say, well, my character is trying to deceive him. I tell him, um, I weave a story about this lie that we came from this other town and we're going to see the king and whatever. Sometimes some players are like, no, I specifically, like I am going to see the king and I'm doing that. But we tend not to roll first and then describe later. But what happens is the die rolls, the, the more we get into this, the entire description first, uh, the more we, in moving our brains from this is what I'd like to see to this is what's going to happen, doesn't mesh with the die rolls, then we get into these, these kind of arguments um, mildly, right, where the disparity between my character's not only very charismatic, but I also, as a player, came up with a really great argument and then the die roll doesn't match, right? Um, RP, what's going on? Um, Scott Post says the designers are just trying to control the most powerful stat in the game. Um, it's only the, I feel like it's only the most powerful if we say that it is, right? It's only um, uh, belief, a per perception makes reality, right? Uh, social stats, charisma stats are not. Um, all powerful. They're not hypnosis. You, you can't, like uh, Vincent says, uh, the magic word is leverage. You can't convince someone that um, that they're a noble or they're they're what, whatever. You can't convince people of things if they if they themselves would never be convinced of it in the per first place, right? You you can't convince a city guard that you're really a lizard man when you're a halfling because he's just going to look at you and go. Thanks for the lie, but it's just not going to happen that way. But what happens is we, in game, the players start weaving the stories first. And the more intricate the story becomes, the more we're like, oh, this should work. And then they roll and then, or they in, weave a story that's so outrageous that it shouldn't work, make a roll. And then it's like, oh, wow, it really did work. 
when in reality, what we should be doing is first going, this is what I'd like to do. Like real simple, I'd like to persuade them. Um, just like I'd like to attack them. Roll and then describe at the end. But but like I said, our mental muscle doesn't work that way. RP Gamer says, hey, in social situations, I use ro roles to supplement a player's role play. If the player gives an awesome speech, then the role is just about how effective it is. Whereas if a player is, isn't too confident, I let them rely more on the role. And we role play like they gave an ama amazing speech. Exactly, because maybe some players just are not, most of us are not public speakers, right? We're not charismatic. We don't come up with, uh, with amazing <laughs> drama on the fly, but my character can. And then there's the opposite, right? Like I might be, I might be the, the really good with the improv. Like I can just come up with things on the fly. But if my character's got an eight charisma, well, that's not going to work. Um, so, and and more often than not, we don't role play out our failures. Like it's easy to to act out the the combat failures, right? Oh, my character can't do this or got tripped up or he's hurt or whatever. But in social interactions, we very rarely go, well, my character is going to fail. We don't decide up front. My character is going to fail in persuading this person. We just look at the, I do my best to persuade them. And then I look at a die roll as opposed to going, let me look at the die roll. Now let me role play out the failure. And what I'm saying is that our own, we, we have held on to our own conception of what social interactions are that we're not strangely enough i'm like going i'm doing this going back to the book right if, if you take a look at at how things are done we're doing them incorrectly we should be saying hey i'd like to do this thing roll and then role play out the results thereof and it feels funny when you, to even say it that way like well wait a minute like like why would i role play screwing up something but we see that often in some of our favorite movies. Take a look at a, uh, at at like Han Solo in Star Wars. He screwed up a, a a social interaction trying to convince you know the authorities that he should be there or not be there. And so the words coming out of his mouth are the failed role in making the role to try to convince someone else. Um, Scott Post says, um, uh, you, you can't wield it as a cudgel. I agree, but what other what other stat can make allies? Um, that's I agree with you, but again, um, the, based on the 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 accepted reality of it, um, would be based like is that person an ally for thirty seconds, an hour, forever? Right? It's it's based on the reality of the of the game. The guard might be convinced, oh you oh you guys really are nobles. I'm going to take you to the king. And then on the way there, somebody else could say, hey, those people aren't related to the king or the king might even be like, why the hell did you bring them here? They're not related to me. And then he changes his mind immediately, right? There are extenuating circumstances. What's the leverage? What, what, what action did the PCs perform or what thing did they pull out to convince someone else that they are to make them an ally, not just talking out, you know, talking out their ass? Um, yeah, Tesla Ranger says that Han Solo scene was ad libbed, right? And that's exactly right, right? But it was ad libbed poorly on purpose, right? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know as a writer, I mean, anytime, anytime you watch a movie or read a book or something, but it was done, it it was done so that it would fail, right? It was written so that it was a failure in trying to convince someone, not not doing a perfect job at it and then rolling some dice and going, oh, screwed up, right? It's it's the other way around. And I'm I'm just saying that it it's it's just the way we it's just our it's it's a muscle memory we use and maybe we're doing it wrong. Um and I'm not saying maybe we're doing it wrong. I, I'm saying we're doing it wrong. It's just one just seems it flows better when we just start interacting and we put the dice down because that's what we want. We want to just interact. And uh, unfortunately, you know, people will say, well, it's going to pull me out of the situation. But we never say that when we go into combat, right? We don't, we don't say, well, I'm trying to tell you how I'm killing the creature. I don't understand why you want me to roll the dice first, right? I can't say I'm going to pull out my sword and hack him into pieces and cut his head off. And then, I, and then when I stab him through the throat, I'm going to tell him how I killed him. G give me some dice so I can prove that I just did it. You have to say, I'm, give me some dice let me see how effective I am, and then let me describe how effective this this particular action was. Um, 
and then describe the, the failures thereof. Oh man, I screwed up. Okay, so I go to attack the, the hill giant, but he brings his club down and I dodge to the side and um, I, I scramble back up, uh, you know, unable to keep my balance as I try to strike at him again or something, right? Um, that kind of thing. Um, RP says, yeah, I've started to use that approach in combat and letting people describe what they do and sometimes ignore attack roll, unless it's a crit either way, obviously. Um, wow, Patchwork Greg, what's going on? Uh, he says, it's easy to tell when we need to roll dice for combat. How do you tell when it's time to transition from free play to rolling dice for social stuff? And that's, but see, that's the point, right? What's, when we say initiative, we all know. We like we get top headed, right? We look down at our character sheets. We're looking at our phones, like, okay, well, there's a character sheet. You know, we start grabbing dice. We we know that transition, you know, because there's this, there's the. It's like blowing a whistle, right? Boom, initiative, boom, and we just flip over. And sometimes we just completely drop all the social stuff, right? We our characters stop talking to each other. We we stop talking to the enemy. We're just like, I'm gonna just kill this thing. He he said, roll initiative, but. Your patchwork brings up a good point. Like, it's easy to tell that, but how do you tell when it's time to transition from free play to like social stuff for rolling dice? And my my feeling on that is that we've never established it. Right? We we don't begin our social interactions by by as a game master or even as players to say, okay, um, hey, we're going to meet the guards. Hey, before we go, get into it, let me let me roll a die. Right. Let, let me just let me just roll, make a roll up front, see what the result is and then start getting into it. And I'm, I'm not even my point in bringing this up is I'm not even advocating that we should stop doing it the old way. <laughs> roll for social initiative. Hell yeah. I mean, there, you know, that's a possibility too, but right. But that, you know, again, that's another complication. Or do we do we have a triple do we? Do we do a triple stat thing, right? Do we have an initiative for combat, an initiative for social, an initiative for like mental things, you know, studying and all, investigating or something? Like, are we going to do that? Hell no. And should we stop doing it the old way? I'm not really advocating that. I'm saying that when we have issues with doing it the way we've used to, we should understand that that's not the way it should be. Um, <laughs> uh, Scott Post has used a friendly list level chart from past editions. There, well, w there are the the meeting someone and whether someone is um, hostile. What is it like? It depends on which chart you use. But some like person is hostile. Someone is um, not an ally, or they are friendly, or they are. You know, it was like a. It was like, hey, if you make a roll so much, or they when you encountered an NPC they started at a certain level and you had to convince them for example let's say somebody was hostile you had to convince them three levels or three inter inter like iterations to get them to be the friendly so you could actually talk to them as opposed to someone who was neutral which might you only have to move them one step versus like three steps or something like that um i'm describing that brutally wrong but 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 my point is like you couldn't encounter an npc that's has no intention of ever being your ally no matter how well your charisma role or whatever is you would only just move them slightly on a chart on like a a scale rather than going from uh we we eat people like you for dinner to hey you're my best friend now in 5 minutes like it doesn't work that way um and and I, I think sometimes some PCs think it does it works that way, right? Like they're just like, well, I've got a high charisma. I can convince it's basically my like my automatic hypnosis and mind control, which that's not how life works, right? You you can't be convinced to buy a car if you don't have the money to buy it and have no intention of buying a new one, right? That just it, it doesn't work that way. Um, RP says uh, I've known some people who who do treat social like combat, um, Vincent, and there are games where um, there is quote unquote social combat, right? You roll dice, you add and subtract numbers, you look at the effectiveness and that kind of thing. You could even um, steal things from, from other games. You know, uh, there's the clock clocks where you can have, you have to achieve so many successes to move someone from their worst position all the way to their best. And it could, you might add a time schedule to that. So it takes you like, 
for each movement of time, the time gets longer and longer to convince them. So you may not be able to convince someone in five minutes, but if you get an hour or 24 hours or a week, you might be able to convince them further. You know what I mean? You could do that. Um, uh, Azala says, <laughs> Azala, hey, what's going on? You could also meet someone who doesn't like the sweet talking and will be better even if it is a test, um, uh, even if the test is a success. And that's where motivation and personality comes from. Right. Some people some people are just turned off by the car salesman talk like myself. Right. If you if if someone just keeps coming up to me and telling me this is the best, this is the greatest. Hey, I want to you know, I go in the stores and when people start coming up to me to want to sell me something, it turns me off completely. Like, leave me alone. Let me walk around your store. Let me find what I'm looking for. Let me pick it up, test it out, look at it, compare. Let me compare prices on my phone. Get off my shoulder. Right. Let me let me text somebody who knows about this. Let me leave. Let me go compare some more prices online and then maybe I'll come back and get it. Right. You know, I mean, many of us are like that. Like, look, it's just get off my shoulder, you know. And so just the sweet talking sometimes doesn't work as well. And so that might be a motivation or how are you approaching this individual? But again, maybe if we have the die rolls in the beginning, the sweet talking character who's got the super high charisma, the diplomancer, right, may understand the situation better. So if they get a high role, they start to walk towards this person and go, oh, man, sweet talking them is not going to work. So what I'll do is I'll pretend like I have a problem and then maybe they come up to me to help me out and then draw them in like like spycraft or something. Um, uh, Zala says, the best response I've found of those salesmen are, I've actually already got one. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. All right. So this isn't this this isn't a this wasn't my thing of you guys are like stupid and I'm right or nothing like that. No, I'm I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna do it the old way, right? We just we're just gonna get into some social interaction. That's just it because it just feels far more natural. But in the back of my mind, I already know that in in reality, we're actually doing it quite incorrectly. Um mechanically i'm not talking about the fact that we we get into social interactions and you're trying to talk to guards and people and convince them and whether it's modern day or it's far future it doesn't really matter my point is that we we don't consider those things now here's 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 let's go into part two because we we're half hour in so let's get into part two and that's that's group roles uh parentheses roles right okay one PC attempts to do something. Normally, this falls into the the perception, the investigation, the I notice things, or or the GM says something real quick, like, "Hey, you person sitting on the outside of the camp, make a perception roll, a notice roll, whatever." This doesn't necessarily. This does not necessarily need to fall into that. This can fall into something else. But this to any other skill roll. But normally, it's about like being surprised or something. Game master asks one person to make a roll. That person fails. All of a sudden, the other four people at the table start raising their hands, jumping in, piling on the rabbit, and they're like, no, 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 let me make a roll. Most of the time, what ends up happening is the person who, who has the best ability to do it fails the roll, and then everybody else stepping down the line who doesn't have that is not as good at it or was it involved in it, tries to jump in because metagaming or not, they know the other person failed something and then they want to get into it. So I'm gonna share something here. Um, and I thought I'd be a, a little bit of a, uh, of a Grognardian teacher here uh, to just, <laughs> to, to basically um, express to people that again, Despite the fact that we think we know we're, how we're doing something, we're actually doing it wrong. We're 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 we're, we're technically doing it wrong. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Normally, when someone like uh, has a a check, um, like for example, someone says, "I'm going to try to move the boulder." Right. This is another example. Someone, I, I want to pick up, there's this big three-ton boulder. My character's the strongest in the group. I'm going to try to move the boulder. They go up to the boulder. Hey, I've got this huge strength. i got all these bonuses. They grab the dice, and the dice just 
do not work. Then everybody else is like, well, I'm going to try to move the boulder. And the weakest person comes up and is like, uh, grabs the dice and makes this amazing roll and then they roll the boulder. And what ends up happening <laughs> a lot of times in these things is like, well, not only is the person who failed the role kind of like miserable, like, oh, that, man, that sucks. But it also steals the spotlight from that person. And it, it again, incongruity, how is the weakest person or less intelligent person or the person who's got no perception in this at all able to perform something when somebody else failed? And then, and then that, not, that not only makes the person who failed feel bad, but it's like it also steals their spotlight because everyone's clapping when the dumb barbarian figures out which book is the right book for the, the ritual when the wizard couldn't find it or when the, the, the woodland, the wood elf ranger is out in the wild sitting on a ridge um, trying to watch for danger in the party, but the person sleeping in their tent who's, uh, you, you know, had three arrow wounds in his back from the battle you know, two hours beforehand wakes up in the middle of the night and detects somebody in the woods when, you know, the wood elf ranger doesn't see anything, right? It does it, It's like, wait, what? Um, Vince talks about Blades in the Dark. They have a neat mechanic for group checks. Um, all roll, you take the highest roll for the check, and then the leader takes stress for everyone who rolled poorly, right? But I, I'm, 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 I'm going to go even further here. There's an actual rule for this. Like, there's actual rules for how this operates, right? So um, I'm going to share with you guys the, the actual rule here. And uh, let's see if I can um, get this nice and large here. And oops, no, nope. move this down. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. All right. Working together. Here we go. And this is from the, oops, oh, don't, don't go that way. This is from the SRD, right? Now, this is the first part of it. And it says sometimes two or more characters team up to attempt a task. The character who's leading effort or the one with the highest ability modifier, right? Whoever says, hey, this is a good idea can make an ability check with advantage, reflecting the help provided by the other characters. And it says multiple characters. In combat, this requires the help action. Well, we know what the help action is kind of, this is fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, by the way. Um, a character can only provide help if the task is one that he or she could attempt alone. For example, trying to open a lock requires proficiency with thieves tools. So a character who lacks that proficiency can't help another character in that task. So if you're not skilled in it, you can't help them out, right? And it goes on to say, moreover, a character can help only when two or more individuals working to together would actually be productive. Some tasks, such as threading a needle, are no easier with help. All right, so that's the first part of that. And we, we kind of understand that part of it, right? Like, well, if I'm trying to move a boulder and you help me push the boulder, that makes sense. Um, but if I'm trying to push a boulder and you're sitting down threading needles, you're not helping me just because you said I'm going to help. But we also have group checks and there's an actual rule for this. It says when a number of individuals are trying to accomplish something as a group, the GM might ask for a group ability check, like being surprised when the group is camping, right? Um, when everyone is trying to move that boulder, when everyone is trying to search for a book, ancient textbook in a library, right? Um, in such a situation, the characters who are skilled at a particular task help cover those who aren't. Okay, it makes sense. To make a group ability check, everyone in the group makes the ability check. If at least half, it's, uh, it's not letting me do it. If at least half the group succeeds, the whole group succeeds. Otherwise, the group fails. So that means if the wizard fails in trying to find the ancient text, that's one failure. Everybody else then rolls, and if at least half the people or more succeed, then you've done it. But if it's less than half, you have to add up all the successes and failures, and then you measure that as the success or failure. It's not if one person succeeds, it's the whole group as a success. And that's the rule. Group checks don't come up very often. 
don't come up very often, and they're most useful when all the characters succeed or fail as a group. For example, when adventurers are navigating a swamp, the GM might call for a group wisdom survival check to see if the characters can avoid quicksand and sinkholes and other natural hazards of the environment. If at least half the group succeeds, the successful characters are able to guide the companions out of danger. Otherwise, the group stumbles into one of those hazards. So, essentially, there is a rule for it, right? We we have those things; they're available. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, going back to the to the uh, to to the chat, like you guys are talking, like um, uh, the worst situation is always uh, group sneaking. The tank always messes this up, and every and and everything, and the rogue did become useless. I I agree with that. Um, <laughs> as I was saying, that twenty, my strength, strength eight halfling picks up the two ton boulder, right? You know, dumb stuff like that, right? Um, uh. Vincent goes on to say, and GMs tend to ask for a lot of sneak rolls, sneak rolls, perception rolls, like surprise rolls, those kind of things. Those come up a lot too. Everybody make a perception check, right? Well, really, by the rules, I'm saying like I've done this and and probably will continue to do it wrong. Five people at the table. Okay, everyone make a perception check. The rule is you find out how many people succeeded. If there's five of them, three need to be successful for the entire group to notice they're gonna be surprised. If three fail out of five, the entire group is surprised. Even if the the elf ranger, if, they, if the entire group wants to jump in on it, even that woodland elf ranger gets surprised if three of his companions fail that group check. So, what what does what does this mean to me? Well, really, what this boils down to is the way the rules are designed. It's designed for spotlighting. For example, instead of everyone jumping in when the woodland elf ranger is needs to make a uh, find out if they're being snuck up on by um by the gnolls in the woods, let that person make the role who's the highest who has the ability to do it maybe have one other person help them. Hey, I'm the bard. I'm going to sit out, sit out here in the woods with them and, um, and have a talk. And oh, by the way, if he needs to look out for danger, I'm going to help this individual, my, my ally, I'm going to help them look out for danger. So that person gets advantage on the role. And then that's it, right? If you, if the PCs want the best advantage, and the game is telling you that this is how the rules work, right? To get the best advantage of that, it's really what happen, happening is the person who has the best skill, maybe one person helps them to get so they, they get that advantage role if they're also skilled at it, and then let them make the role so that they become the spotlight character. Or if the entire group is like, look, we're all in it together, we all succeed or fail together, and we want to, we want to, you know stay together, pull our weapons, and we're we're going to fight back to back. We're just going to make a big circle, and we're all going to point out, and we're going to all fail or succeed together. Then that's what you do. You roll to all together to see if you succeed or roll all together to see if you fail. Even if someone spikes out and says, well, I got a 20. Well, your 20 doesn't matter if you've got four other rolls you have to contend with, right? That's how the roll, that's how the die rolls work. So, you know, that thing of pile on the rabbit once somebody fails and everyone's just like, well, just because he's by himself, I want to roll to see if I sense danger. Well, I want to roll. Well, I want to roll. There's an actual rule for that. And again, we're probably, we've been doing it wrong or it may not have been codified until now. But again, sometimes it's uh, me. Li listen, I'm the most hippie, rules light, make up shit on the fly kind of person that you want. But you can only do that if you know what the rules are first before you start breaking them. And I think it's just a, a, a knee-jerk reaction, right? Um, it's like, it's, there are many games that use um, a gradient in success or failure. And I love games, or, or I love games that use gradients. And I use gradients even in games that don't have like the pass-fail system. Right, someone makes a roll and they need to roll a 13 or better on a D20, and they roll a 15. To me, that's not as good as if they rolled an 18, 19, or 20. Right? There's a gradient. Oh, you you hear something in the woods, but you don't know what it is. 
right? Or you see an orc scout, but I don't describe the other five orc scouts behind them or something. Or you hear something in the woods, you think it's a deer. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to go sneak down and try to hunt down the deer. Boom. Okay. Then you stumble upon the scout, right? There might be a gradient of success. It's the fail forward. It's the, um, it's the idea of yes and no, but, you know, it's, it's, it's and or no, and then but, or, you know, it's like, it's like adding a little bit to it. Oh, you, you failed your perception check, but, but it wasn't that much of a failure. So you do notice something in the woods you think is a wild animal, right? I would describe it that way. Or you notice someone in the woods, but you don't notice the other interlopers in the woods. Right. Or you notice something in the woods, you go after them, but then the party gets surrounded by other interlopers that you didn't notice. Or you notice that the party's getting surrounded, but it's too late. Right. That kind of thing where you notice they're being surrounded. You wish you had seen them a mile off, but instead they're 30 feet away. Now you can raise the alarm um, and wake everyone before they're surprised, but you're completely surrounded. You know, it's it's the it's the gradient uh, type of thing. Uh, Vincent says, um, uh, in the chat, like you want to have a high point, not an average point time. This half need to succeed rule is actually pretty bad in most situations that does not involve a very common skill like perceptions. feels like they don't want the PCs to use group actions. And I, I absolutely agree with you that, that um, the way the rules are written in fifth edition, it doesn't, it, it doesn't behoove the group to make group actions, right? It sounds like, it, it sounds like, um, this is spotlighting. The cleric makes the medicine check or the ranger makes the perception check. The barbarian makes the strength check. The, the, the rogue makes the stealth check, right? The wizard makes the arcane check and they can get help action with it. Hey, I'm also, I'm a warlock. I'm also knowledgeable in arcane lore. I'm going to help you look for the book while somebody else does something else, which actually kind of makes sense, right? Instead of the entire group piling on the rabbit, maybe there should be other things for them to do. Oh, we snuck into the, the room of ancient text. Hey, wizard and warlock, go look for a book. I'm gonna stand by the door and look out for something while these two other people tend, tend to the wounds of their you know wounded individuals. We're all doing our own thing. We're in a group, but we're all doing our own thing to support everyone else when we can even if it means I'm gonna separate from the group so that I can be there to detect for wandering monsters or something like that. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Dead Man uh, responds uh, to Vince, like, you know, Dead Man the Storyteller says, like Fantasy Flight Games, uh, Star Wars RPG, where, right, it's not really group, it's more like spotlighting, like, hey, I'm, I'm very good at this thing, so let me do it um, and succeed and fail on my own, and then we go on from there. Vince says they should at least include that some things can only be done as a group action, maybe something like moving a huge stone. And, and again, we're, we are assuming that the group, one person may be very good at something, but we're also assuming that the rest of the group isn't, which may not be the case, right? If the barbarian is trying to move the stone, maybe the barbarian and the fighter who's second strongest it's better because it gives the barbarian advantage to both of them, those two, try to move the stone as opposed to the, the barbarian, the fighter, the halfling, the wizard, and the warlock helping out, right? Because maybe the, the, the halfling and the, whatever, the, the weak halfling, the weak wizard, and the, the average warlock aren't really adding to the, to the event, you know what I mean? And so those three would have to succeed, not those three, but there's might be a greater chance those three fail versus the two strongest ones succeeding, which make them all fail as a group, right? By this, by the rules. I'm not saying that you have to handle it this way at all. Or you could just say, hey, everybody help me move the rock. The barbarian gets advantage and then you just deal with it that way too, right? It does say that, that if you, if you get help working with something, it doesn't say one character. It says if other characters try to attempt to help you, you gain advantage. That one person gains advantage. It's still spotlighting. My strong character is being helped by my group. I roll and I get advantage on that roll. Right? That's 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 the rule. So we can fight against it and we can say, well, it's stupid or dumb or that's not how I do it, which is fine. You, you, we can all do what we want. But I'm saying the reason why 
maybe we're coming across some kind of like conflict with that. You know, the barbarian finding the ancient ritual text in the library versus the, the wizard is because we, we are not applying how the rules are set up. And so then we get into situations where the, the person with the lack of skill or the person who doesn't know what they're doing or the person who's the weakest looks like they're shining above the spotlight person, but the rules say otherwise. The rules are saying, no, really, they're actually, it re it's really better for the wizard to be helped by everyone else. And then the wizard, that PC makes the role with the help action versus everyone making a role and bringing the wizard down, right? That's that's how the rules are set up. So we are interpreting things because we want to see them differently as opposed to us behaving in the manner that the rules are telling us in which, hey guy, you're the expert, we're just gonna help you out, you make the role and then we all sit back and see that person and see if they succeed or fail. And if that person fails, we accept it as a group, right? That's That's how it is, we don't pile on the rabbit. Right, that's because everyone's like, oh, I'm gonna roll. I'm, I'm gonna look for the book. I'm the barbarian. I'm gonna look for the book. Well, actually, the rules say, you, you know, you, you really can't, or you could, but you're probably gonna screw it up for everybody else. Um, um, <laughs> right, and I, I'm and uh, like, um, and Vince says, but in the rules, using a group action for that would totally suck. Assuming a standard group of five, maybe two of them are trained in sneaking, which would mean the the chance of failure is high correct if you use that rule, right? But there's also the help action. So if two of them are very good at sneaking, those two sneak off, the other three stay behind. They don't help out because they are they are very, it, so you just don't do that. That's the whole point of the rule, right? If, you, if you're trying to shoehorn what you wanna do into the rule, it's not gonna work. What you do is you use the rule and then all the other actions are later. The ranger and rogue sneak off. The ranger gives a help action to the rogue. The rest of the party stays behind, right? That's that's success. The entire group wants to sneak through the woods. That's probably a failure. Together, that's probably a failure, right? That's you know the, that that's where it comes in. <laughs> Dead Man Mysterious says, "Oh, look at, at look at this thing," which is true, right? I mean, really, in reality, has that ever happened? Have you been looking for something like, "Oh, I can't find this thing," and someone who doesn't even live where you live goes, "Are you looking for this?" and picks it up, and it's like, "Are were you looking for this?" And you're like. Jeez, it was right in front of my face, right? It's the I can't find my glasses and they're sitting up on, on my head like this, right? It's that that does happen. Um, those can be funny moments. And as a group action one, why wouldn't that happen, right? If everyone makes the role and a barbarian actually does find the ancient text, maybe he was using it to, uh, you, you know, pound his sword back in the, in the shape and someone's like, give me that book, you know? And that's happened in movies. Right, everyone's looking for something, and and the 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 oblivious individual has it in their hand, and they're picking their teeth with it, or something, um, or using it as like a cup. Uh, uh, they're using the 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 disc the, of of the the knock list of all the spies as like a uh, a cup holder or something. Like it's just you know dumb stuff like that happens, but and they can be fun, um, but the way the rules are written is probably pretty rare. Um, I wouldn't do that. Um, Scott Post says, or the action could become a lower difficult difficulty group action, which I would allow that too, right? Especially if you really don't need to be trained in it. Like, hey, everybody, help me look for a book that's got this symbol on it. Yeah, okay, the difficulty's low. Everybody make the role and, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you can hand wave it. I'm not, I'm not advocating th that we should stop doing it the way we're doing. I'm advocating that we should know the way it should be done and then understanding that if it doesn't turn out right, that we understand why. It, it, right. Vince says, um, but what do you do to get your tank and plate armor through the sneaking passage? Well, they're loud. I would say that the that's the whole point, right? The 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 spotlight goes to the person who's able to sneak. The the person, the tank and the plate armor that's loud is the person in the plate armor that's loud. Right, there's no, there's no getting around that, um, in 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 essence, right? It's the 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 person in plate armor who's loud doesn't sneak because that's not their specialty, and the rules don't. the The way the rule is written, it behooves them not to try to be that sneaky person. They there's a chance they might succeed, and this is where like inspiration comes in, spells, 
other PCs being more creative in how to do it, um, taking the armor off, uh, using a silence spell. This is where you become creative to get through these situations, not trying to circumvent the rules to get through the situation, right? I'm saying the rule exists, be creative to circumvent it rather than try to bend the rule to make you succeed in something that you really shouldn't be successful in. It, it, I know that's, and again, this is, it's a weird, it's a, it's a mental muscle, right? It's, it's the, it's me, it's like my thing with the third pillar and using the environment. If I say there's thick fog and you can't see, and the person who's the archer can't see the range people, it's not them yelling. It's turn off the muscle that says you're trying to nerf my character rather than saying, well, let's try to find an area where the fog isn't affecting me or use a spell to blow the fog away or use a bright light or bring the enemies closer or you know what i mean it's it's switching a different mental muscle um um uh vince says helping would not help him much if he has a bad modifier and group action would also suck so you're screwed uh, and i would say that's probably true scott post says i don't know but if he has to sneak he has to sneak right Vince says, um, but you cannot cover for him or create a situation that allows him to sneak through or something. This would mean to leave him behind, which sucks. Same would go for climbing, et cetera, but it creates situations where you have to split up, which is usually not what you want to do. Um, my, my feeling is just to become far more creative, right? If, if you're trying to sneak up to an enemy, maybe, maybe someone sneaks up to the enemy and draws the enemy to the tank. Or you have other abilities like, um, like silence or things like that that maybe... Uh, make them quiet. But again, the situation that's created is one where one person spotlighted over the other. So if the, if the situation requires sneaking, the spotlight moves to the person who's very good at sneaking. When combat breaks out and sneaking's not possible, guess who the spotlight switches over to? Switches over to the tank and the plate armor. Doesn't matter if they're loud. Now the person sneaking's like, hmm, my sneaking isn't very good. The spotlight has shifted. But we don't say that. We go, oh, my character's screwed. Th this room has bright light and there's no nothing I can hide behind. Why can't I sneak around, right? Everyone says that, but they're flipping the wrong mental muscle. What the game is saying by the rules is the spotlight shifts from person to person based on the situation. And that means that you have to accept the fact the spotlight is not going to be on you. You have to say that my character in plate armor is not the sneaking type. And probably for the most part, having you know disadvantage and sneaking around, it's not going to work. So I have to accept the fact that my character won't be that way unless my other allies um, do you know finagle some way to get me to sneak past something. So therefore, that's not my spotlight. That's that's not where my character shines. That you have to accept that fact, and that's in any role playing game, right? Every situation doesn't mean your PC is the is top dog it means that you might have to i don't know play a game with other people to allow them to say oh i'm the smart one i found the book as opposed to the barbarian who's like well this is stupid i can't find a book and my character doesn't have arcane knowledge and i don't understand what, blah, blah, blah. well that's the whole point right if 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 you make a well-rounded pc you can engage in things role playing with other people right you could engage in those things without being the person who's just sitting back folding their arms and and being pouty lipped right you're the, the person in the plate armor that's the tank that can't sneak has to say you know say to themselves hey guy you're the most expert person i know i trust you as a pc as another player character in character to do this thing i'm going to stay behind or i'm going to I know i'm going to make noise or i'm going to draw the enemy towards me so that you can sneak around them because the, the loud person can, who may have stealth could give a help action to the person sneaking by being the distraction in the first place, right? I'd allow that. That's a help action. Hey, I'm going to make a lot of noise so the rogue can sneak around behind. Makes perfect sense to me, right? The rogue gets the spotlight being sneaky, and I get the spotlight bit by being noisy and drawing the enemy towards me. So it's it's, again, it's the mental muscle of not going towards looking at the rules and go, the rules suck because it doesn't let me, it doesn't help me. It's the rules are this way. That must mean that this situation spotlights someone else. Um, uh, Vince says, I would prefer having a situation where I assume that the rogue has some tricks to get his buddy through the sneaking passage instead of having to think of these things for yourself and describe it each, each time again. 
Uh, as Olive says, stealth can be more than just moving silently, though. This is sure it can, but I still don't like these situations, and that is what I tend to allow group actions for because it gives a spotlight to the sneaky character and makes the non-sneaky character be thankful and appreciate his sneaking friend more because he can help him through tight spots, which is which is my my thing is uh, there is a help action. there is, That's a rule, right? The help action, and my thing is the noisy person can help the sneaky person sneak around by being noisy in the first place. It's the it's the distracting the guards and going, hey, come over here. I'm, you know, I'm playing cards or I need help with my car because my flat tire while the other person sneaks around to open up the, the trunk. Right. That's that is helping someone out. Um, it may not be blatant. It's not both of them sneaking, but it could be sneaky. Right. The, the rogue needs to get a sneak a key to get through a locked door. But there's guards. I'm going to make noise so the guards come to talk to me. Maybe they accost me a little bit. The rogue pulls a key off of the guard, gets the key, opens up the door. Um, you know, the noisy person's like, oh, thank you very much. That's okay. The guards go about their business, and now you get to sneak through the door, right? But it, it's – the creativity is being pushed down because it doesn't merge with the – we feel like it doesn't merge with the rules, but the rules are are actually designed to force you to become more creative instead of saying the rule doesn't work. What the rule is saying is, well, if you want to get around this thing as a group, you need to work together and think of something other than, hey, let's all just make a roll and, and do, the, do the darn thing. Um, yeah. Um, uh, even says maybe I uh, maybe I'm ruined with through Blaze and Dark, but I prefer their approach. And again, many games are designed in different ways, right? Um, where everyone gets to roll the dice, you know, as a group action, and in like in Blaze, and then the person who's really taking the lead, like basically the in general, the person giving the instruction, although that's not necessarily the case, but it could be, quote unquote, the leader in this situation. Hey, you go here, you go there. It's like Captain America, right? You you go here, you fly over here, and Hulk, you smash. He's the person taking control of the situation, making the role to keep the, the enemy from getting outside of New York City, right? And he's the one that takes the pressure from everyone else who has to do their thing, and then they make a group role. The Hulk is not adding to that because the Hulk's pro you know pretty stupid, but you have this person who's doing this thing, who is being given the help action by the other individuals, right? Um, and that's where the difference is. There's the help action and there's the group action. Those are two different rules. The help action is I want to do this thing, uh, one or more people help me do it, and so I get advantage, or we all as a group make our individual roles. And if there's five people, three have to succeed. It's my, my, my <laughs> ranting on this is, are we doing it wrong? Yes. Should we continue doing it the old way? Sure. Why not? I mean, that's whatever. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I accept the fact that that's not how they want us to do it, but using, using the rules that are established, this might be why it is, that if five people make a roll and only one needs to succeed, why bother rolling in the first place, right? You, then you're, you, you have five chances of getting a success, which case the, the, ro the rolling becomes insignificant. It's really just automatic successes all along the way. And that doesn't make sense either, right? Um, five people all, all getting their own individual role and then finding out that the group succeeds because one of them succeeds, they will always succeed. There's a greater chance. The wizard's smart. So the, ch the great chance that the wizard finds something that the group is looking for is going to succeed. Uh, the, the characters need to sneak. Well, if the rogue's the best at sneaking and only the role rogue needs to be successful, then they're all going to be sneaky. That means they'll all succeed. And the rules are saying, well, that doesn't make any sense either. That puts too much weight into the players hands of always succeeding if you want to do this as a group that's your choice or succeed five people three need to make a success as a group otherwise the other way to do it is give the spotlight to one person everyone else is giving them the help action um uh, da -da -da -da, uh, <clears throat> Azal says, there's an interesting Reddit post I saw about using different attributes for skill, like using charisma stealth to blend into a crowd while the rogue hides in an alley with uh, deck stealth. Um, that's in the rules. I could actually pull it up now. I, I may not do that. But the point is, that's in the rules. 
it's a variant. You just use, you pick an attribute, you pick the skill, you combine them together and you're done. Um, that it, it was on a Reddit post, but it's actually in the, in the, uh, the OGL, it's in it's in there. It's 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 in the SRD. I'm sorry, it's in the SRD. I apologize. System reference document. Um, it's it's in there. It's it's a rule. I some people were like, you're changing the rules. No, it it's a variant. You could say in our table we don't do that. Athletics always blends with dexterity, but you could say no. Well, and you know, in in my group, that's not how it's done. We we pick a stat like World of Darkness, right? We pick a stat. We pick a skill. They're not linked together. We we add them and then we roll. Um, Jared P says uh, it really depends on the circumstance at the moment of the check. Is everyone racing to get out of a burning forest, or is it just one person trying to map it out ahead of time? Right. I also like to give players help or group roles, but only if they can come up with a sensible narrative reason as to why they can dogpile the situation. That's another thing too, right? It's 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 narrative positioning it, it's the reality of the situation does it make sense that that the wizard can't find the book and everyone else is just eating that they automatically the wizard who spent three hours looking for the book doesn't find it but everybody gets up and is like oh there's the book right there you know while the the barbarian is chewing on a um thigh bone of a giant lizard or something right like does that make any sense um if someone is mapping a way out and someone is very good at navigating, and then everyone follows that person, the spotlight is on that person. Sight, right? We're using the rules, right? Help action. Hey, I'm gonna navigate ahead. You guys stay behind. Just make sure there's nobody coming after me. Great, you can, you're you the great navigator, Miss, Mr. Ranger, Woodland Ranger, sir. Get us out of the burning forest, right? As opposed to, to no, I know you're the expert, but we're all gonna to work together because I'm the person telling us what we should do, right? that happens too. And then maybe that's the, the dichotomy, right? Give the spotlight to the person that gets the, the spotlight in that situation. And then everyone moves around because then when they fight, they, they get out of a burning forest and there's a burning forest behind them and then there's enemies in front of them. And the danger is they're going to be squeezed in between. Maybe the person who's the, the loud person who can't navigate, now the barbarian gets to, to shine in that situation, right? That's the point. It's moving the spotlight around. Um, we are trying to reinterpret what the rules are um, as opposed to saying, oh, these are the rules. Well, let's just use them the way they are. Um, Vince says, yeah, but more more fail, the uh, more stress the leader gains, which can be very significant in the long run because too much stress knocks the leader out. That's for, um, for Blades in the Dark. Um, <laughs> Jerry P says, of course, the more the merrier. The more the merrier, the group that rolls together, TPKs together, yeah. Um, Azala says that variant rule caused an argument in another server I was in. It basically boiled down to the GM wasn't being assertive and the players were taking advantage of it, so he didn't like it. Um, yeah, you know what? And see, that that has nothing to do with the rules of the game, right? We, we're, we're still human beings with personalities. There's always – there are players who try to play the player and play the GM, not the game, right? They, there are people who use their – their personality to get what they want rather than using the rules to, to get what they want, right? If the if the GM says, hey, listen, you, you can use, um, you have to use constitution plus persuasion to, to um, I, I don't know, maneuver around the dinner party that's like six hours long, right? And yeah, you're charismatic, but you have to put on a strong face. So you gotta use constitution plus charisma. And the, and the player's like, oh, well that sucks because my constitution score is low and, and my charisma is high. And oh, you're trying to nerf my character, you mother, bruh. you know, those situations happen, but that's, that's separate from the rules. That's people just being, you know, a-holes and not trusting their game master who says, listen, in this situation, you're at a dinner party, you sure as hell gonna use your constitution because for six hours, you gotta put on, you gotta smile in people's faces and not show that you are freaking annoyed and you wanna cut all their throats, right? That could be a thing. Um, uh, the player said, st uh, said because they had big muscles, they should be able to use strength to hack stuff. Um, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff happens all the time. Um, <laughs> uh, Zal says it, uh, uh, it has something, it was something about you need to, good nerves to have big muscles, so you use the nerves and the muscles to hack the circuits and the thing. Eh, what, you know what? Um, we, 
sometimes we try to get into the weeds to dig ourselves down deep so that we're right and the other person's wrong. And um, a, a lot of times, um, a, a lot of times the individual um, who's trying to, uh, the individual who's trying to achieve certain things, we, we try to use reality in our role playing games as opposed to situational awareness. Me as a game master, if someone said, listen, guess what? Um, I, I really feel like my, my character's speed is more effective than my strength in a situation. Then it's me being, a, being an adjudicator go, hmm, you know, that makes sense. All right, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's, like, it, it's like saying, it's like trying to apply specifics of reality to an, an artificial situation. I mean, PCs are heroes, right? I'm gonna let you be a hero and me as my me as the game master is just to offer challenges, not to offer stone walls. And I can I can say, well, in this situation, it actually makes sense to do it this way. But if but the whole point is to be creative. And again, it's that mental muscle, right? Turning it off and going, oh, well, there's only one way to solve this situation. No, no, I mean, maybe somebody else has a better idea. And I go, yeah, that makes sense. But then there's also the the you also have to be as a player to go well if the person's a GM and I'm playing in a game and they're the GM I have to accept their rulings now I could say as a GM I don't prefer their style and then to play with someone else excuse me but to accept it nonetheless right um, Vincent says there is a difference between arguing and pulling stuff out of your ass to get a bonus <laughs> yeah how often has that line been crossed many times right so some people are just trying to argue and get a bonus and just be like well um, my, my, uh, Twitch nerves are far better in my character. And, uh, he does, he's been doing pushups with his thumbs for years, even though I never described it. So really, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you'll get some of those people and, and then you just got to shut that shit down. That has nothing to do with the rules of the game. That's just their personality. Like, okay, dude, listen, if, if all you want to do is succeed here, here's the books. Um, here's some blank paper, write down what your character wants to do and then publish it and be a novelist. Otherwise you're playing a game and you're gonna make a couple of roles and you're gonna share the spotlight and there's gonna be times where, oh, guess what? You're not going to be the best at something. Somebody else will and accept it. And then that's session zero. And if you can't accept it, uh, okay, we're okay, we're done. I've done that before where I played a game. I was 10 minutes into the game. People start arguing and I was like, flip, 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 done. Okay, you guys win. You get all the magic items in the DMG. I pushed it. We're done. The game's done. Um, all the campaigns are done. Uh, you've destroyed the world. You're done. You have everything you want. And it's like, well, we wanted to play the game. No, you wanted to tell me you wanted to succeed in a game that I wanted to create to give you to create uh, hazards and stories and obstacles and things for you to overcome. If all you want to do is succeed, you can do that by being a novelist, writing a character like Dritz you know, and then you succeed in everything and then you're done, right? But you make up your own character, you might write a book. So that that's just my thing about that. Um, JP says, there's also the idea that some roles cannot be made by a single individual. Some tasks require multiple people, moving a large object, synchronized surprises, magical rituals. And that's where you get people into it, right? You pull them in where you're like, and that's not just moving the spotlight, but you can also, rearrange the spotlight so that everyone shines together because maybe the barbarian needs the help of other people to move the giant stone thing because, well, maybe he's been dominating because he's the strongest character and everyone else is like, well, I'm just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. And he's just like, no, I need your help to do this. And they're like, oh, cool. We get to jump in. That's, that's all it is. It's just, I mean, we, we like to focus on extremes and most of us are pretty much pretty moderate when it comes to things like that. Um, hey, Baron Cantrell, how often can you argue with the universe to get your, <laughs> your way? Yeah, the GM is the universe, right? They they literally are your senses. They're everything else that your character is not. They're the gravity. They're the food. They're the air you breathe. They're the light that you see by, right? You can't argue with the GM. So if you if 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 you're an argumentative player, it, it's kind of behooves you. <laughs> it's like, well, we don't need you anymore right? You, as a player, right? GMs are, are far more rare than players. Um, being argumentative like that is strange. Ah, dogs, what's up, dogs? Um, 
Vince says the point of the player get the fact that they actually want trouble is the point games tend to um, improve drastically, even if used rarely. Yeah, get the point that that the whole point is to <laughs> how many times have you guys had a, a, a situation where somebody created a character and the character has no intention on adventuring? It's just like, what? What? Well, no, he's a merchant and he doesn't travel anywhere and he wants to open up a business. And you're just like, oh, my God, really, dude? Like seriously uh the whole point is to go dungeon delving we we all just agreed we're going to go dungeon delving and you created a theater owner really um <laughs> what annoys me always annoys me azala says like when you've got your charismatic character that just talked down an enemy and is on the verge of getting what you want and the meathead just attacks anyway yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, dogs. Yeah, we're 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 cutting out. Yeah. Um. So, guys, thank you for joining me on this little rant. Um. I know it's supposed to be Future Friday. Next week, we're gonna do. We're going to talk about um different time periods because we were doing world building and we didn't really get into modern like technological. So I thought that the the subject would be far larger. So we're gonna do time periods. Um. Basically, we're gonna sell. Why bother doing different time periods? What is it about them? What kind of stories can you tell in them? What stories really don't work in those time periods? And what are what make the best? Uh, I don't know why the camera keeps to whatever. Um, so anyway, guys, everybody have a great day. Have a great weekend. I know it's Friday. Um, enjoy yourselves out there. Um, here in the Midwest, we've got frigid cold temperatures. It's going to be in the negatives today, maybe a high of like 10 degrees Fahrenheit or something. Pretty bad. But everybody, guys, have a great one. Um, thanks to all the <laughs> Baron B, what's up, man? Thanks, thanks for um for uh for, for popping on in. Uh good to be seen. <laughs> good to be seen. Um everybody, um JP, Vince, <laughs> Vince always we we're we're definitely gonna have to do a uh do a, a blades in the dark, like not even review, but like a like a breakdown, because it's just so hyper specific, man. It's, I love that game. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, dogs. He just says, yeah, take care. Um, everybody have a great one. Thanks for joining in. I'll see you guys uh, bright and early. Well, not early. Six a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This channel here, Demi Daily Deep Dives, RPG with DBJ. Thank you guys. I'm out.